a life in the truth. Don't care what y'all saying the God he got proof. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, just daily, 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 go get up is the show. You think it ain't when it is? Uh, you think it won't when it is? We are here and we are in motion. We do this thing. Taking off fast lane, no coasting. And everything is going to be all right. We got this thing up. Locked in. This game tight. Word. And everything is going to be okay. Monday. Power Monday. This is what we say. Uh, tonight. Tonight on the Daily Go Get Him Isn't showing us Power Monday. The 10th of the month. January 10th. 10 days into the year. And we are talking about worry sick about being around. But tonight, we're going to talk about whether you feel comfortable going out. Going out, going out to get some pizza, get something to eat, going out to dinner, going to parties, clubs, bars, even even going to the market, the grocery store. Do you feel comfortable being around people? So we're going to talk about how the pandemic was a little different when it first started. When the pandemic first started, you know, the rules were pretty simple. First of all, we had social distancing and masking and... You know, and remember, the, the country was mostly shut down. We was doing a lot of quarantining. And now, yeah, the cat is kind of out the bag. Now there's no social distancing. We still have masks, but some people be bitching about putting them on. And, 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 and we don't have any quarantining. As a matter of fact, when the pandemic first started, remember, we didn't have no vaccine. Now we got a vaccine, but the infection numbers are through the roof. I mean, we never saw infection numbers this high. This is crazy. Very crazy. And you know what else? I'm going to tell you what else. We also didn't have children getting infected. And now we do, and now we do, 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 do something to up. So before, our babies wasn't getting this thing. It was scattered. You know, there were a few kids getting it, but not enough to really affect the whole situation. Now our kids are getting it. Our babies are getting it. They're not dying, but they're sick. And nobody wants to be sick with this thing because this thing is serious. It's very serious. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So let's get it popping. Urban Therapy with Sun Sun 752. And this your daily, daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily, the daily. The Daily Go Get Emism Show. We do this every single day, every single day, every day. Every day it rains, every day it rains. And the DG will do the same. We break it down, baby. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains, and the DG will do the same. Every day it rains and the DG will do the same. I am your host, Sun752, a.k.a. Omar with the rrrr. And if you can't say Omar with the rrrr, well, then you just say Omar with the R. It, this is the Daily go get a show. And we're talking about worried sick about being around people. Worry sick about being around people. Has it affected you? Has it? Has it? Are you to the point where you don't want to go outside? You don't want to. You don't want to go. You don't want to go out to eat. You don't feel comfortable being close to people, especially people who don't have masks on. For the past two years, what we have definitely experienced is um, anxiety around being around people with the open air. But with these infections, with the, with the rate of these infections, the number of these infections, see, remember when COVID first came out, when COVID first came out, a lot of people were in denial. Like, hey, ain't nobody got that shit. A lot of people didn't know people who had it. Ah, man, I don't know nobody got that shit. Do you know anybody who got it? I don't know nobody. Now, it's impossible for you to know somebody to not know anybody, I should say, who has not, excuse me, is it, it is impossible to say that you don't know anybody who has been infected. 
I'm not saying that everybody you know has been affected. That's why, why I was almost goofing right there. But you definitely know people who have gotten infected. By this time, you probably know people who have gotten, who have died because of it. More than likely, you know one or two people who have died, perished because of COVID-19. And that shows you the seriousness of this illness, of this virus, of this infection, of this disease. It's rad. So even if you haven't gotten it, even if you don't want to get vaccinated, even if you get vaccinated, it ain't going to fucking matter. It seems like this thing is coming to see you. What's going on, my man Alejandro? My mellow. He says, I don't want these nasty non-mask MFers. I know about four people who died. Word. And Lisa Mawu, Temple One. Mawu, Lisa, Temple One, Temple One. What's going on? My, it's good to see me some you. Yeah, this shit is serious, man. This is not for play play. So, like I said, even if you, even if you've never gotten COVID, even if you're not vaccinated, even if you don't want to wear a mask, whatever the case may be, because I'm sure that there's still some lingering um um trumpers out there you know they've been they've been calming down a little bit they, it's hard for them to co- cover co- uh carry the torch for the ball after he came out and said nah them vaccines good ma and yo daddy yo yo nah, vaccines all right yeah i know i know i know i know i'm supposed to say you know the whole q9 thing i'm sure there's some q9 people but a bunch of QAnon people have gotten colds, and they can say that it's um it's it's the flu, but it's not. And you know how like I didn't know whether COVID was a severe flu or whatever until I got that fucking section the second shot. Now I didn't want to get the shot, and I don't advocate getting the shot. And I ain't on front. I don't feel like I've been the same ever since I got the shot. But I'll tell you this. When I got the shot, the after effects, the effects of getting the shot, I think gave me a little picture of what it feels like to have COVID-19. And that level of fatigue, tiredness, lethargy is something that I've never seen before. And I've had the flu double digit times easy. I still get that shit every year. Every year. Never had a flu shot. Never going to get one either. But, uh, But the bottom line is, I couldn't imagine that level of fatigue, feeling like I gained 500 pounds overnight. I couldn't imagine having a cough or breathing issues on top of that. I can't imagine that. But that's exactly what we're working with. Emily on the on the on the on the on the Instagram side, thanks for coming on through. Thanks for taking this ride. You got work over here on YouTube. So get your ass over here and come through. Some people are co- Oh, you're doing your work. Uh, yeah, I see your name now. Yeah, they're going to get hurt. All right, anyway. Okay, okay. Anyway, so yeah. So whether you believe that the virus is here or not, now you have ironclad personal examples, no matter who you are, that this shit is real. So how does it affect your, your anxiety level when you have to go to the market or the grocery store if you live down south or in the Midwest? How does it affect you? You know, how do you do how do you go through your day-to-day tasks if you're not working remotely and you have to go to work? How do you feel about having to be in an office full of people? Or if you work in a restaurant, being around the, the the not only your coworkers who you don't know what type of lifestyle they lead, but also the general public. If you work in retail. See, when this virus first came out, we had social distancing. That seems to be a, a policy that they refused to put back in play. But I think it was helpful. It, it was helpful even if it didn't prevent the virus, it was helpful in making you feel a little more secure, a little more confident, a little better about being out there among people. Like, all right, I got my mask. They got on masks. I trust my mask. I have on an N95 or whatever the case may be. Plus, we six feet apart. 
So, you know, homie ain't going to be all, all breathing on me, breathing down my neck. So, how do you, how, how does it feel? What we got? What we got? Let me see. Alejandro uh, says, I work at a lab, so I wear an N95 all day. All right, all right. He says, yes, plus Omicron is causing COVID eye, COVID eye and COVID nosebleeds. Wow. What's COVID eye? Damn, they're coming up with, I don't even know what that is. And Emily says, I have, I have the sniffles now because of, because of allergies. Someone said I got COVID. They're, there are still other sicknesses, I tell them. Don't be putting COVID on me, I tell them. Well, shoot, they can they can say you got COVID all, all they want. When it really all comes down to it, when you get COVID, you're going to know. Like, just that preview. Just that preview when I was sick as a dog. I mean, think about it. Imagine being sick but ain't sick. You're just feeling the effect. They put the sickness in you. But just to let you know, this shit ain't this shit is real. This is how your brethren and, and sistren was feeling when they got that shit. So I ain't going front, man. You know, I don't really feel confident like that being around people. And I don't have confidence confidence in this in, in this uh vaccine. I don't. I got it because I, I had to get it in order to keep my job. And I was only I was only at my job for another six weeks after that. I should have held out, but I would have been holding out with pay. Nah, I holler. I'm good. No, no, no. We good. We good. Levels is good. Levels is good. Levels of levels of levels. Yeah, we ain't doing that. I can't miss a check. I don't know about you. I save money. Yeah, I got money. But I, I don't like missing no check. I like, I like, I like getting paid. I like getting paid. When the cuts are made, he goes out with the fade. After that's done, that's when we get paid. Shout out to uh, Fruit Kwan from, from uh, Stetson Sonic. Anyway, so, so there are a lot of things that are going on now that might raise your level of anxi anxiety when going out and being around others more than when the when the pandemic first started when the pandemic first started there were a lot of us in denial that didn't think that the shit was real they didn't think that 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 people were getting it the way they were reporting it they absolutely didn't think that people were dying at the rate that people were dying you know but we did have some type of measures put in we did have some types of measures put in place that were protecting us in some ways we had the masks we had we we were self quarantining, and I don't mean when you when you felt like you were getting sick or if you did get sick. I mean you know that we had to shut down. So we even had remember we even had uh, we even had uh, curfews. Now that was a little extreme, you know that was very martial law like. I don't want to go there again. I don't want to do that again. But but um, also children weren't getting it. Children were getting it in, in such small numbers, it was insignificant. Now, our babies are getting that shit, man. Our children, toddlers, sometimes infants. Yeah, that ain't fair. You know what I mean? And also, definitely our teenagers pre pre and pre-adolescents, they are getting that shit. Oh, and that's another thing that schools were closed. Most of almost all of the schools in the country were closed, so there was remote learning, and we've had to turn back to remote learning again for for some time. Like like the, the kids, if if they have an outbreak at the schools and they go back to to remote learning, and then uh, then they come back. So it, this is this is real, son. I mean, this shit is real. So so um. What about you? What are you? What are you doing? Like, are you obsessing about it? And I'm not saying that you should. But has this affected you? Has this affected you in a way where you really feel anxious or hesitant to go outside? I want to go outside. 
but I don't want to get sick. You fuck them niggas. Uh, I, I want to go outside. Yeah. But I ain't trying to get sick. Don't want to go, don't want to go, don't want to go. It's bad. That's real. My brother Ansel Jones is in the house. What's going on, my brother Ansel Jones? And T. Carrie right morning, noon, and night. It's always great to have my people going directly into your site. And Carol Chamberlain, my good friend. Glad you came through. You know that we rock from beginning to end. And Shirley Cheryl, the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. You know how I feel about you, girl. And everything is going to be okay. We do this like this. It's Power Monday on the Daily Go Get Amism Show. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet. This is the Daily Go Get Amism Show. We're talking about worry sick about being around people. You know, you know, you might not even be the type of person that's that's mad skittish about being around people, but nowadays, in order, see, see, here's the thing. Not wanting to be around people because you don't want to get sick is one thing. But not being not wanting to be around people because you don't want to get infected because you going you're going home to your loved ones who may have problems that they may not be able to fix. And they may perish because of this virus. Now that should cause or that could cause a lot of a, a lot of anxiety. I can feel that. You know, you know, like if you have an elderly person at the crib and they have mad health issues. And you know, like, yo, they ain't going to be the COVID. If they get a COVID, a COVID going to cause the death, the reaper coming, the reaper coming, the reaper re re the reap coming. And you ain't trying to do that. So I could see how that would really heighten your anxiety about going out. I don't blame them. And Alejandro, 3,000x, 3,000 times. Says that's why I'm tripping. I don't, yeah, I feel you. Oh, I have a 16 month old. Oh, by the way, congratulations about that, Nilo. That's what I know. He said, I have a 16 month old, he can't get the shot. Word, yo, but on, but 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 real shit though, dog. Even if if he could get the shot, would you give your baby the shot? Would you give your baby the shot? What man, listen, my baby about to turn 16. You, you got a 16 month old. On the 19th, my baby turns 16. It ain't going to be sweet. It's going to be a sour, nasty, salty, bitter, fucked up, nasty ass 16. But she going to get shit. But you know what I mean? But recently, recently, she didn't, she tested negative. Her, her big brother tested negative. Her mom tested positive. Her grandma tested positive. Her grandfather tested positive. Shit is real. And they be social distancing, masking up, and they all they all uh, um, um, vaccinated and boosted. This vaccine, this boosted, yo, man, I don't, yo, yo, man, say what you want to say. Fail how you want to feel. This vaccination, it ain't solving nothing. Now, the first thing we did when the when the vaccines came out, a bunch of people ran to get vaccinated, and the first thing they did was kill social distancing. Nah, you ain't got social distancing no more. Take them them though, take them stickers off the floor. We ain't gotta do that. You ain't gotta be no nah, man, no, no, no social distance. Yo, yo, you can stand right here, son. You can stand right here. Cats is dancing in line. Yo, I can grind on. I can get. Yo, get the. Get up. Nick. Now you got to sit you. Yo. They took away the, the six foot markers, the social distancing markers. And they tried to kill masks. Like, yo, you don't need no masks. You got vaccinated. If you got the vaccine, you ain't got to wear no mask. You good. If you if you ain't vaccinated though, we strongly suggest that you keep the mask on. But it ain't really gonna matter because these people that's vaccinated ain't, ain't gonna catch that shit anyway. It's gonna be y'all unvaccinated cats that's getting that shit. Y'all gonna be fucked up. 
Ain't that what they said? Ain't that what they said? Ain't that what they said? That's what they said. 70, 80 million vaccinations ago. How does it work now? How does it work now? What we doing? What we doing? What we doing, son? It, it's and I'm not here to I'm not here to bash the vaccine. But it either works or it don't. They dust the variant it. Omicron. I don't care about your uh, vaccine, you little boost. The old Mario, he up there dancing on stage, singing with B2K. He don't care getting getting um sexually uh getting sexually assaulted by managers. That's what Omicron do. I mean Omaria. Yeah, Om- <laughs> you know I'm saying. You know what I mean? He ain't making no good music. Omicron don't care. So regardless of how you feel about the vaccines, my real my beef is that they not doing what they said they, that they was going to do. So I'm like, bring the social distancing back because people are scared to go outside. People are scared to go. Listen, man, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable having to wear my mask outside. But I'll do this shit. I went to the Eagles game. I, I went to the Eagles game. All right, y'all know I'm I'm a season ticket holder to the Philadelphia Eagles. I went to, I didn't go to all their games. I missed one. I missed one game. But the games that I went to, I didn't sit in my seat, man. I'm not sitting there. I sat in my seat one time, and and I realized that nobody out, nobody, nobody there was wearing masks. I said, oh no, we out. I'm out of here. I didn't sit in my seat again. Standing room only. Holla back. The people who sit next to me, they probably think like that. Omar must have uh, sold his tickets. I ain't sell them shits. I'm in the building. Yesterday, not not yesterday. I'm sorry. Saturday night, I went to the the Eagles Dallas um, Cowboys game. It was a massacre. It was a massacre. It was very embarrassing because I can't stand the Cowboys. I don't care who we lose to. I don't like to lose no Cowboys. And we sat our starters. Like it's sweet like that. I mean, like y'all motherfuckers. Ha- anyway, I didn't even go near people. I stayed in the. I don't know what you call the area. It's when you come into the stadium. It's like they have like these benches, like little places where you can eat. They like I, they got the stands up. It's down there, like near where. Where you can go to the, the 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 store to buy merchandise and all that kind of shit. I stayed down there and watched the game on the screen. I didn't go in there. I I didn't see one one play live with my eyes. I watched the screen. I went down there basically to watch TV because I didn't want to waste my money on a ticket. And you know why? Because I feel better. I'm not trying to. First of all, it was cold as shit out there. Let's let's get that out of the way. It was cold as fuck. I'm not going down there for that. And I'm not, I wasn't trying to come home and be sick. That's not, that's a no, no. That's a, uh, uh-uh. uh, that's a, uh-uh. and I have an elderly person that I love. That's my mama. And I'm not going around nobody bringing her back nothing. So y'all can kiss the girls and make them cry all, all y'all porgy, Georgie porgy asses want. But I'm not doing that. You take them nasty COVID kissing booth lips of yours and you go ahead and smooch you on, 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 on smooch your way to a coat. Yo, he kissing a COVID mask. Hey, he kisses a COVID mask, huh? But I ain't trying to get sick. Monica Davis, Queen Monica. Queen Monica, it's good to see me some you. You know that is T-R-U-E. Yo, so, Ansel Jones says, all these people sick and, and crime is crazy in the world. True. 
Monica Davis says, they said it would lessen the impact of COVID, have a less um, um, fatality for those vaccinated. That's what they say. And maybe that's true. But they also said that cats wasn't going to be getting sick like that. You supposed to be protected. Shit, I knew I wasn't going to die. All I know is that it's like they put the um, the virus on steroids. It was all good when children weren't getting it. It was all good when everybody was holed up in the house. It was all good when we was six feet apart. It was all good when we wasn't shaking hands or giving hugs. It was all good when we wasn't tongue kissing on the bench. That's me feeling the titties when I'm tongue kissing because that's what I do. I'm not just gonna be tongue kissing. I ain't, I gotta feel something. Mm. Mm. And that's that's whether it's the first kiss or the... <laughs> mm. 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 anyway. So it was all good then. It's like once they say ready, get set, go, everything, you know, turned topsy turvy. Everything got got crazy. Every everybody went A W O L. Except the damn virus. The damn virus is here. All the way here. That shit is here like sunshine. And we gotta do better than that, man. Alejandro says, I take it personal when people get on the subway with no mask. Man, listen. Okay, hold on. Emily says, and when I turn 16, and when she turns 16, I'm going to need you to get her a car. She deserves it. And All right, throw that money right into the... Uh, Right to the pot, no problem. Alejandro says it only lowers your chance from going to the hospital or dying. Word. I don't want the hospital bill. <laughs> that shit is bad. Yep, bring back social distancing. No doubt. Was that the um cuz? Was it cuz was that cuz of the cowboy? <laughs> I don't um I didn't realize social distances was out because I'm still doing it. Yeah, a lot of people are still um um practicing it, but it's not the law of the land. He said, Wow, you should have sold them tickets that day. Yeah, probably. There was a new but no, I wouldn't have sold them because I thought that they were gonna play their starters. I thought I was gonna see a real game. And th- that that game still had playoff impl- implications as far as seeding is concerned. I thought we was going to have a chance to move up to the sixth seed instead of being the seventh seed. I didn't realize that it didn't matter. They just, they, they, 50, they beat them 52 to 25. Yo, man, nah, nah, son, nah. Okay. Okay. Listen, if y'all would like to call into the show, You can call in, and the number to call is area code 319 That's the number to call. I said a 319 Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319 Yeah, get on the line. I said a 319 Yeah, get your shot, baby. Oh, uh. get your shot, baby. Oh, uh. get your shot, baby. Oh, uh. get your shot, baby. Oh. Uh. Get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Oh, get your shine, baby. Three one nine five two seven six one nine nine, baby. This is the Daily Go Get a Business Show. Press number one, and that will let me know that you would like to speak, and then I will call you out by the last four digits of your telephone number. You can rock out, rock on it, do the damn, 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 do the damn thing. Okay, Alejandro says. I work at a lab. We did 40,000 COVID tests today. Man, stop. 
Stizzy. Stizzy. All right, we have a we have a caller on the line. Caller with the last number six six zero six. We're going to take you, and then after that, caller with the last numbers four five nine six. All right, caller with the last number six six zero six. Welcome to the Daily Go Get a Business Show. Thank you for calling in. What's going on? How you feeling this t- t- today? Today. What's up, Go? How are you doing? Feeling like a real man should. How about you? Kind of disappointed. Mm. Went shopping today. Came across, almost came across, well, came across a Karen. Because I wasn't wearing a mask. So I think she went to uh, to the manager. But the manager <laughs> didn't do anything. But... Um, I get tired of idiots who um, don't do research, who get uh, bent out of shape, don't know shit about the virus, don't know shit about the mask, but take pleasure in being a snitch. Okay. So, you know, that kind of is disheartening. And I feel, well, people who don't do what they're supposed to do in their due diligence to find out what's going on in this uh, so-called pandemic, Gonna leave them behind. Okay. You know, if the shit hit, if the shit hits the fan and they get caught up on it, not my problem. So you don't you don't like to wear a mask? No. Uh. Okay. I don't wear a mask. Okay. Hmm. All right. So even if the even if the establishment um, requires. All, all of the patrons to wear a mask. You don't wear a mask? I don't wear a mask. Now, some have given me a mask when I walked in. Okay, fine. But I'm not wearing one. Okay. It's not a law. And the science has already shown that this isn't um, this virus. Even at the very beginning, two years ago, they said that this uh, so-called virus had only a 2% mortality rate. You do not shut down an entire economy on a 2% mortality rate. That's less than the regular flu. Okay. But there was still a lot of people getting sick, regular, who didn't die. Don't you think they count? People who got sick? Yeah. If they didn't die and they got sick, it's the same as influenza. It's a normal coronavirus which goes around every year. It's a novel coronavirus. And it may be man-made, but the masks don't help. Even the CDC, even Fauci said that while he's in, while he's in between flip-flopping. Okay. And the people who have died... Usually they're over 65 and they have uh, underlying diseases. And, the ki- and now they're trying to vaccinate the kids. There isn't an epidemiologist worth the salt who says that the kids were susceptible to any kind of uh, repercussions from COVID mm-hmm. up until about the age of about 18 or so. Okay. But the vaccine is doing more damage. So, you know, if people can believe me or not believe me, People can do their own thing. We'll see what happens in the end. Okay. Well, you know, um, your research may tell you one thing, and somebody else's research may tell them another thing. What I think is this: just like just like in advertising, uh, uh, you're getting a lot. I'm getting a lot of feedback from your mic over there. What, 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 what you doing over there? I was moving around. That was so hopefully it's stable. How's it now? Yeah, you good. You, you sound like you was a uh, like you would put it put it in a pota- put your put your microphone in a uh, in a potato chip bag or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you move around and you and you and you you know you scratch the wire. You know, you're rubbing the wire with your hands. Oh, okay. And you you get the um you know you get the feedback from it. Sorry. It's okay, but um. But yeah, just like in advertising, word of mouth, word of mouth advertising is always very strong. Um, people are always going to rely on that stronger than people that they don't know. So when it comes to COVID, I rely on 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 personal stats. Like I've known, I I can name five people who died from it. 
easily. And uh-huh. they and they weren't and they weren't senior citizens. That's the crazy part. You know, so uh you know uh, uh, and then and then Yeah, I hear you. Look, I hear you. Mm-hmm. But the thing is is that it's already been shown that the government has been paying hospitals and doctors to a call to, to call the uh, the cause of death COVID related when it's not even COVID related. Okay. So I bet you if the coroner if a coroner took a look at those five bodies, I bet you four out of five didn't die from COVID, but what said that they would die from COVID. There's been there was there was one guy, for instance, who died in a motorcycle accident and they said he died from COVID. They're paying thousands of dollars, thousands, to hospitals and doctors to say and to put on the death certificate, died from COVID. Mm. Okay. Still? Or, they, or, have the, yeah. or has the money dried up? Oh, wow. You can't make money. It's not going to dry up. The well, money's, you know. The money's, <laughs> the money's, the money's in, a, in a well that's uh, extremely deep. It's um, endless, endless pockets of money. Hmm. Well, like I said, people can do their own research. I listen to whistleblowers. I listen to people who... Uh, who've been behind the scenes. Um, Pfizer whistleblowers have said it's a dangerous uh, vaccine. People don't want to listen. I don't care. Well, I've already talked to people. You know, let them do what they want. Well, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not a, a big proponent of the vaccine on, on any level. I don't think that it works at all. And, if, and I do believe that it has, it, it probably works more to our detriment in some ways. Than it, than it does to our benefit. But more natural things um, I can get with, like social distancing, I say yes. Masks, I say yes. Come on, man. I'm going no, to sh- I'm have to social distancing, not even masks. No, 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 listen. Look, I won't. You, you, know, you, yeah. sound, you, you sound real staticky. You got to fix it. Uh, again? Yes. Yeah, okay. Like I moved the mat. I moved. I'm all right. Now this should be good. Hopefully, because I had to move it around. Now I'm stable. Nah, it's bad. I don't it's know. What it is. Yeah, it's like it's I'm like. Gonna put, I'm gonna put my. That way, I want to interfere with the show. Okay, that's better. Whatever you did, just did. I don't know why. <laughs> I picked up the phone. I don't know. I'm going to put myself on mute anyway. You can let the other caller in go. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. Caller with the last numbers, 4596. Welcome to the Daily go get Show. How are you feeling this evening? Is it 4596? Yeah, 4596. Well, welcome to the extravaganza. It's been a long you time. You know who it is. You it's been a long me. time. This you is my dog. You're damn right. You know what I'm saying? I'm still bald headed and pretty, though, just like you. That's what's up, you man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Listen. All right. You know, you, I, had to throw the du- I had to blow the dust off the mic for this tonight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay? Mm-hmm. So, you know, son, you know me a long time. You know, I keep it real. All right? And I got to be honest. Okay? I, too, just like you, I got the vaccine. All right? And the reason why I did it was because I have a 16-month-old kid. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I know that there was no option for vaccination for him. And I know that there's some debate as to whether or not you want to give your kid that and everything. My wife is a pediatric nurse and a, a nurse practitioner, as well as a doctor of nursing education. So I know I'm looking at the science. She's looking at the science behind whether or not, you know, this will work or this is supposed to be better for the children. One of the things that I've been reading is that the reason why they haven't released it yet for little kids is because the one that they were going to release, they felt wasn't going to really do anything. And so they're waiting to see some more variants and add it to the mix. Part of the reason why the vaccine isn't working and the booster isn't working right now with Omicron is because Omicron came out after the vaccine and the boosters were created. So right. it's almost like a flu shot where they, they, they put a certain amount of strains in that shot and they try to catch as many strains as they can. But anything that comes after that, Mm, you might get guy. And so, well, you know, I, I understand why there is some apprehension, 
But, you know, one of the re main reasons why I called, because, you know, as always, for years, you've always done a phenomenal job on the mic. Um, but when you opened up the mic and I heard this last caller, I had to call it. Okay. okay. First and foremost. And, I, and I'm, and I'm going to keep it, you know, the, the, Nilo has, has gotten some, some uh, has gotten a little bit more cooth. You know what I'm saying? I got a little more, more, uh, more cooth in my age. Okay. Right? So it won't be as incendiary as it used to be. So I'll keep it respectful. You know what I'm saying? But I have to question this man's um, research that he's saying he did. Okay. Because okay. the research that I'm hearing sounds like it came straight from QAnon or Fox News or OAN or BS or wherever. I don't know. But all I know is, is that the facts don't add up. And, you know, it is true that um, to some extent what he said was somewhat factual. And that piece was, was that when he said masks don't work, that's not the entire truth. Um, certain masks may not work as well against Omicron. Now, let me just tell you what my credentials are. I do work for a lab, and I told you what my wife does. Right. So I am in the medical industry, and today alone, my, my lab did 40,000 COVID tests in New York City. The majority of those tests popped up at, for Omicron, not Delta. But, you know, that's just to give you guys a roundup of, of why I, I can say what I'm saying. So what that gentleman said, to some extent, there's a portion of it that is true. Paper masks, Cloth masks aren't really cutting it anymore up against Omicron. Okay. In order to have more protection, you would have to wear an N95. Now, I will tell you that wearing an N95 is like breathing through cardboard. I wear it every day, all day. My job has mandated it. Um, it, it is about 95% effective against keeping out the virus from you breathing it in. Um, but there's nothing that's 100%. So when people say, hey, you know, you know, the masks don't work, or hey, you know, the virus, the <coughs> vaccine might not work. Nothing is going to keep you 100%. Hell, a seatbelt is not 100%. You might get into a car accident tomorrow and it ends up dead. So, God forbid. So, you know, I, I when I heard him say these things, I, I want people to understand that, you know, there's also a certain amount of politics involved in this, right? And and this goes back to, to something that, that you said earlier in, in the uh, show, which was, you know, Trump now came out and said, that's work. Let's take that shit. And once you want to go to the hospital or die, boost works because he did it. Now, all of a sudden, Candace Owen is out there saying, oh, you know, Trump is old and he doesn't know. And all this <laughs> stuff, right? Now, they turn, now they're turning on Trump. Now they're turning on Trump, right? Because Trump's telling the truth. So sometimes it's not about what you want to hear, but what is. And I understand that masks may not be comfortable. And I understand about, you know, you know, you may not want to get the vaccine. And that is your choice. But when it comes down to masks, the number one thing that I see in debates or on the Internet is, you know, my right, my choice. Or, you know, I have the right to do what I want with my body. And, you know, why don't you mind your business? But here's what I want people to think about. How is it not my mind and my business when I got to breathe the same air you breathe in? If you're standing next to me with no mask, and you breathe it in and out, blowing that COVID around, right? Mm -hmm. how, how, how is that not me minding my business? So now I have to remain silent, and I have to stay quiet about you blowing this virus around when you could easily just put on a mask and do your part. So when I hear people say things like, I'm not wearing a mask, to me, that's telling me you purposefully know you might be doing wrong, you purposefully know you might be infecting people who might then bring that virus to their children or their elderly parents, and you don't care. And so if you don't care, then I really shouldn't care when they put down mandates or they do things that force you to do the right thing. Because if you won't do the right thing, society will make you do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would love to hear where this gentleman gets these facts, because nowhere have I seen these facts actually be deemed facts and that's 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 what i want to say yeah um, okay good okay that means like uh that should mean that should mean that you're finished now right for now okay so here are the facts that. that i've seen you think seen, you've yeah. seen the mainstream facts and you've seen what's been presented by whatever cnn or whatever other type of um i told you where i work of news media I you've seen. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Whatever, 
whatever with the news media you've seen and you work in a lab, that's fine. And there's a lot of doctors who've gotten higher degrees and they work in hospitals, they have private practice, and they've been threatened by the CDC to not um, give exemptions to their patients, otherwise their licenses will be pulled, of course, in a veiled way. Now, um, Nobel Prize winners have said it, but like I said before, you were listening. Whistleblowers from Pfizer, whistleblower, I didn't say OSHA, but whistleblowers from OSHA have come out and said that these masks are not, are not effective. The N1, uh, the N1 was the N95 mask, may or may not be. But that's a new, fairly new so-called requirement by the CDC in the last couple of weeks. The last yeah. two years, they've been recommending, they've been recommending and then not recommending masks, and Fauci's been flipping back and forth. Now again, if you don't want to take a look at them, um, I happen to trust whistleblowers because they don't have an axe to grind as long as they present the facts in a way that seems reasonable. But again, mm -hmm. if you want to take facts, the so-called facts that you take a look at and, um, and think of it as true, it's up to you. Okay, I, I guess my question is, with regards to the, the, new, the new variant and the new masks, you're right. For a while, Fauci was saying that there was no need for masks and that's 100 percent accurate for a while he said that we could reduce we could probably lay back on the mask for a while see the, the problem with, with what a lot of people don't understand and i understand this it's not it's not something that anybody needs to be ashamed of because we all have different lots in life you know some of us are painters some of us are doctors some of us are you know hr people some of us are in logistics whatever the case may be so we all have our own jobs and we specialize in certain things but what people in medicine understand is that you can put out a vaccine and three weeks later that virus can mutate and if that virus mutates that virus learns it's a living organism it learns how to evade the protection that you've created it's almost like you get adt for your house or your apartment and now broadman from the fifth floor uh, figures out that you don't have that ADT sensor by that window. So now he decides he's just going to come in through the window. It's, it's really no different. And so when you talk about things like, you know, um, the, the not needing of a mask, at the time Fauci said that cloth masks or masks, paper masks, surgical masks would work. However, he also said that, and this was most recently, at this point, the government was so uneasy with the fact that so many Americans don't want to wear a mask at all, that they'd rather you wear anything over your face. They'd rather tell you, put anything over your face, because it will at least provide some sort of protection, rather than tell people, go out and get this new, more expensive mask, because people may be even further deterred. So a couple of things are going on here, right? The variant is now more transmissible, right? So it's dancing around your standard surgical mask or your standard cloth mask. And I know this personally because my wife has friends who also work in her hospital who have gotten boosted and have gotten the vaccine and have also contracted COVID-19. Thankfully, one of the things that the media as well as the doctors are saying is true. When you are vaccinated and you are boosted, your chances of going to the hospital or your chances of death are significantly lower. Trump said it. The doctors are saying it, it's the truth. Okay. Not saying that everybody's not gonna not gonna say that everybody's gonna live. If you're 90, all right, hell a strong breeze might take you out. But most people aren't dying. That's the one, probably the one few things Trump didn't lie about. Most people that are dying are unvaccinated. Okay. But when you go back to um the the reasons behind um the masks. And, and new masks or not wearing masks and the variant, the variant is evading cloth masks, paper masks. And so the mixed messages that Fauci gave, and, and, and this is where I have to give some credence to what this man is saying, right? Because I can understand why a lot of Americans are confused. I can understand why a lot of Americans are sitting back saying, well, you told me that a mask is good. Now you're telling me the mask isn't working. Well, unfortunately, the game has changed, and the game is changing quickly. So if anybody who's on Instagram and is following uh, Sun's uh, page on Instagram and watching the show from Instagram, uh, make sure you show Sun some love. You know, he's, 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 a, he's a, uh, an artist at this game. Um, you know, I've known him many years. Um, make sure that you fully, when people say do your research, make sure you get research from credible sources. 
don't don't watch some guy on YouTube. Don't listen to just any old person telling you any old thing, right? Because there are Nobel Peace Prize people, I'm sure, who have said things against the virus. But they could also be taking money from guys like Alex Jones or the far right to also deter you from doing things from a political perspective. So it goes both ways. But one of the things that I want to say, sir, is that you specifically honed in on the mainstream media. And if you've noticed, I rarely brought up the if I barely ever brought up the mainstream media. I'm talking about doctors, numbers, and facts. So let's keep it to the doctors, numbers, and facts. And my question for you, sir, is where are you getting your facts? Who, what doctors are you referring to said that the vaccine doesn't work, said that masks don't work? What, what doctor has told you that? So that I would like to know. Dr. Richard Fleming, Dr. Brian Artis, Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. Robert Malone. Malone is the, uh, one of the inventors of the mRNA vaccine. Um, Peter, Richard Fleming has done a, a test right in front, uh, run, well, not right in front of people, but in front of video where we took a petri dish, put in an ordinary blood, took a vial, took a drop, a few drops from the vial of the normal vaccine you get at, the, uh, at these stores where you're letting people punch your jab, punch your skin. And dropped in a few drops of the uh, vaccine into the petri dish. Within a few minutes, all of the blood cells died. Even if you put bleach into a petri dish, you don't get that kind of reaction. Richard Fleming, that's Richard Fleming. Peter McCullough has gotten, has gotten on the news. Um, he's talked about um, he's talked about it. He's he's what written over 500 uh, articles and peer-reviewed publications. To the Nobel Prize winners, I don't remember their names. Um, alone, like I said, I give up given his credentials. Now, who are your um, who wait, are wait a minute, you? wait a minute before y'all wait, wait, wait. Let me let me let me jump in here for a second because what we're talking about tonight is worried sick about being around people. So, whether the validity of masks are 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 um valid or whether or whether the vaccines work or or or, or not. Whether the variants, the, the Delta or Omicron, are are um, are stronger than what the vaccine can provide or whatever, the, all of those are factors for a certain situation. But but one thing is one thing that needs to be highlighted here is the psychological um, element that persists when you're talking about your immune system. When people mm -hmm. feel confident that they are being protected. Just like in a, in a in a um in a placebo situation, when you feel like something is working, your mind tells you that it is, and it actually works out that way. It builds up a certain amount of immunity just because you you perceive that that you are protected. So when we start talking mm -hmm. about being anxious or afraid to go out because you think that somebody is going to give you a, a, um, a virus, even though your your immune system may be in in good standing you can lessen the strength of your immune system by 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 being stressed out and worried and scared you know that's just a proven fact so i want us mm -hmm. to move uh, more towards the things that we can do in order to jumpstart or spark our immune system by feeling good about the the steps that we're taking so um, if, yeah. if, if the two of you could provide some some um, information towards that, I would really appreciate it because we, we th th yeah. this is a big deal. Now, whether you believe that the, yeah. the vaccines work or that the or that the, uh, the masks work or social distancing is necessary, or whatever, whether you believe that or not, you know, that is going to go very far as far as the uh, uh, psychologically preparing you to be able to fight off diseases, whether we're talking about COVID, whether we're talking about the flu, a cold, um, even even cancer or, or other other uh, um, um, uh, non-contagious diseases. So can can we talk yeah. about, can we give some information on that? Yeah, you mean from the, from the emotional standpoint, how people make, what makes people feel more comfortable? Is that what, you're, is that what I'm to understand? Yeah, yeah. What would, yeah. what would you um, suggest? I, I, for me, for, for me, I would say, for me, ultimately, I look at the, not the numbers. So, like, for example, if I see a situation where, um, you know, 
the, the doctors, the medical community, New England Journal of Medicine, you know, nurses associations across the, around the world say, hey, look, the numbers show a significant difference between the amount of unvaccinated people who are not wearing masks and who's ending up in hospitals and dying versus the number of people who are um, ending up dead or in the hospital who are vaccinated and do wear masks. That's where I got to look at the numbers because, you see, the reason why I focus on the numbers is because that's what takes the politics out of it. That now it doesn't matter what a specific one or two doctors um, say who tell me what I want to hear. The numbers, in the words of Jay-Z, men lie, women not lie, numbers don't. So for me, when, the, when I look at the numbers and the numbers say, hey, things are going to peak, and, and just so your, your audience is aware, I know that you probably have an international audience or, and, 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 and a national audience, but in the, the city of New York alone and in its um, surrounding area, they're looking at a peak of about uh, at around January 13th. So that's when things are estimated to peak with the hospitals in New York, right? So, and the reason why I spe specify New York is because that's really one of the biggest cities in the area. So, um, I, I, for me, it's the numbers. When I look at the numbers, I, I put aside what I may hear on the news or what I may hear from, you know, pundits or politicians or whatever the case may be. It's the numbers for me. When the numbers, when I look at the numbers and the numbers say, hey, dead, death toll, this, non-dead, death toll, this, that's what I focus on. That, that's, that, that's, my, that's my answer. Okay. Now, that's interesting. Um, I, want, I want to ask you a question. I want you to answer that the best in, in the best way that you can. And then I have a question for Joe. All right. Now, Nilo, you work in a lab. So you have, yeah. you have a greater database of information that you can rely on in order to make you feel confident about exactly what's happening out here. So you have an advantage over yeah. the average citizen. Now, with with, yeah. with our knowledge and sometimes just uh, um, sometimes um, unreliable um, um, possibly false information about how the numbers are generated, how would a, a regular a regular everyday citizen that may watch the news or may not watch the news, how can they be sure what would make them have confidence that the numbers that you're talking about are reliable when we know that, that like Joe was saying, there's so there have, has been so much uh, rumors and, and evidence of payola scams to skew the numbers. Yeah. Why, why, yeah, why yeah, should yeah. we, why should I, we believe I, you? Yeah, I, I would probably say one of the things that I do um, is um, I, I'll give you an example. I, I talked to a relative of mine who lives down in Florida. And as many of you know, um, down in Florida, the governor down there's decision was to do nothing. Just say, hey, look, you know what? I'm opening everything up. No mask. Do you do whatever you want to do? Right. right. And so as many of you also probably see, the rates are going up. So I said, OK, you know, what? let me put this aside. Let me talk to people on the ground. And so I talked to some relatives and um, a close family friend. Um, his wife passed away, all right? And so, I, you know, I asked my, my family, you know, how's he doing and so forth. And he said, well, they said, well, you know, the only problem that he's having right now is he's really struggling in addition to all the emotional stuff. He can't uh, cremate his wife because of the backlog. And I said, well, what do you mean backlog? And it was explained to me that there was an extreme backlog in Florida at the crematories because of COVID deaths. So then I said, okay, well, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me do a little research here, right? So then I talked to a buddy of mine whose father, unfortunately, um, his uh, stepmom passed away recently, who also lives in Florida. And I was talking to him. And he says, and it kind of goes a little bit back to what you were saying with regards to word of mouth, son. So he tells me, yeah, you know, I said, so what's going on? You know, I want to send your dad, you know, a, a gift basket or something, just a, you know, a bereavement basket because I feel bad. I knew his stepmom, whatever. He said, yeah, the problem is my dad can't cremate her because of the backlog. Now, this is another different section of Florida. So I decided to just pick up the phone and pretend like I was trying to lay down one of my relatives. And I said, hey, you know, how, you know, what are we looking at with regards to, um, you know, cremating a relative of mine that recently passed away? And the guy on the phone, he didn't laugh, but he kind of sighed, uh, but with a, with a slight chuckle, like, geez, another one? And he was like, well, <clears throat> we're talking months. 
I said, months. He said, yeah. He said, yeah, I got I, I got plenty of bodies I have to cremate because of COVID. And I said, okay. So I, so that's one example. Then I also heard, you know, from some other individuals, hey, you know, the hospitals are backed up. My wife was telling me this. Her friends were telling me this. So I called up some hospitals. And I said, hey, you know, um, you know, what's going on with the hospitals? And I was told that many hospitals, by, this is by hospital personnel, right? That there's a massive issue with beds because people who are sick are taking up hospital beds, mostly unvaccinated people, okay, are taking up hospital beds. And so as a result, hospitals are being forced now to turn other patients away because they have no hospital beds. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, eliminate um, elective surgery, things like appendicitis surgeries or things that are like, you know, things that they could put off maybe a little bit because they may get that bed in a day or two, but they can't give up the bed right now. So what I did was I picked up the phone myself and I would implore a lot of people to do this. I mean, I'm not telling you to jam up the phone lines to the hospital, but give them a call and find out for yourselves. Pick up the phone, call up the hospital and say, hey, listen, is there a, is there a, a problem with hospital beds? And let them tell you. Talk to nurses who work in the hospital. Talk to doctors who work in the hospital and see what they say. That's, I mean, because if you really want to know, that's the best way to know, right there. Talk to the people who are sitting right there. They'll tell you. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah like the 54% of nurses who say they're not going to take the vaccine and yet they've been fired. And as a result of the shortage, some, some hospitals want them to come back. Sir, sir. Robert that's Kennedy not, sir, that's Jr. Not that's not true, sir. That's you not true. Not true. That's not true. In the state of New York, in the state of New York, it was less than, less than, far less than 25% in the state of New York nurses who got let go. I didn't far say less. New York, and they're interrupting me again. A Robert well, I, F. Kennedy I, I, Jr. has written a book about it. Um, again, Robert if you F. don't. Uh, but Robert I'm just, Kennedy? Bob Did you say Robert Kennedy, Kennedy Jr. Yeah. Uh huh. All right, uh, Joe. Joe, I'm yeah. gonna ask you this. So, I, I'm gonna ask yeah. you. I want to ask you, what do you do based on what you know? What makes you feel confident that you're not going to get this virus, or that uh, what makes you feel good about going out? And I don't know if you hang around with people. I don't know if you go to bars or clubs or or hang out or in, in social gatherings. But if um. Given your position on masks and 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 vaccines and and social distancing and everything, what do you do to make yourself feel confident about about interacting with people or or going out? Like, uh, is there any? Do you have any because feelings had, about that? Yeah, because I've had a very good immune system. I had the flu, which almost killed me years and years ago. So I built up antibodies. Um, I've been out here for two years under the auspices of Fauci and I think the, the girl's name is Bixen or whatever her name is. And I haven't caught it. I haven't caught it from indoors. I haven't caught it from outdoors. Of, um, and I had to wear the mask when I had to wear the mask. But Fauci said, no mask, yes mask, double mask, triple mask, don't worry, don't have to worry about the kids. Now we have to worry about the kids and it's been two years. So we have, we're supposed to have had herd immunity by now, but just because some guy works in the lab taking um, blood samples and putting them under a microscope doesn't make you an expert. If you want to, you take a look at the names that I presented who are whistleblowers who do not have access to crime unless they've been fired for some reason, which is involving um, some kind of animosity towards their particular former employer. I haven't heard about that yet. And when it came to the numbers of the uh, surgeons, I didn't, of the uh, nurses, I didn't say New York. I'm talking about nationwide. Now, if you don't believe me, again, I don't care. You don't have to do it. But because you were in, uh, in Florida, they've been telling you that people have been dying of COVID. Either they have been dying of COVID because of the disease, or they've been dying of the COVID as a result of the vaccine. Now, that's something that you can look into. Well, yeah. So, so are you are you implying that the vaccine is killing people now? Is that what I'm Oh, hearing? absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so let me so so first let me circle back to the comment that you had made with regards to Mr. Kennedy. So Mr. Kennedy is known as an American environmental lawyer, though he is not 
a doctor. He is not anybody from the medical community. And he's also known as an author and a conspiracy theorist of anti-vaccine advocacy. So he's a person who purposefully goes out and sells books to people who also want to believe what they want to believe, right? And well, that's your, what that's want your assumption. Well, that's your that's what me, sir. Is, is that not is that not true? Is he not a conspiracy theorist, sir? Why would you believe he's a conspiracy theorist? He's peddling stories that have no actual valid scientific. How do you know that? How do you know that? Did you read the book? Because the doc, because the New England Journal of Medicine, the Doctors Association of America, the Nursing Association of America, none of them are listening nor agreeing with the things that he said. Now, with all the other individuals that you've, that you've mentioned, isn't it and interesting? And I also just, you, you, want, you sorry, sir, Hey, listen, hey, you didn't want me to interrupt you. Please don't interrupt me. Isn't it, isn't it interesting yeah, that every single individual that you mentioned also seems to be a Fox News contributor and an OAN contributor? You have not mentioned not one person who has come up and has been and has been said is respected by any of these medical organizations that I've mentioned. And so let me ask you a final question, sir. Do you honestly believe in your heart? Do you honestly believe that all of the nurses and doctors, the majority of the people, not the exorbitant number that you presented, but the majority of people, doctors and nurses, who are still working and decided to get that vaccine to keep their job and who have also vaccinated their entire family, do you really believe that those people, if they really felt, knowing what they know from a scientific perspective, believe that that vaccine was going to harm themselves and their families? Do you really believe that they would give, all of these people would give that vaccine to their family? Do you really believe that these people would tell their families, yeah, wear a mask when it doesn't work? Think about that from a numeric perspective. Think about all the doctors and the nurses around the world. Let's just leave America out of it. Let's get the whole world here. This is not a, a, a national issue. This is a global pandemic. Over 67% of the entire globe is vaccinated now. They're giving it away for free to, to keep it from getting any worse than it is. And part of the reason why we didn't hit herd immunity and the country alone is because 70, we couldn't get to the number of 75% of the citizens becoming vaccinated. And that is a fact. I implore you to look it up. So therefore, again, I'm going to ask you, you really believe that the majority of the medical community in this country and around the world would infect their own families knowing what they know? Hmm. Okay. Um, this is some... some I'm going to take that silence as a... Hold, hold on. For what it is. Hold on. Hold on, Nilo. I, he, he may be stuck in here. Let me see. Joe, you there? There I am. Okay, I got disconnected. Yeah. Now, first off, you make a presumption that oh, they know they're reading the facts and they're uh, therefore their, you know, their family will be safe. Of course, they're not going to endanger their own family, but they're reading the facts from the same sources that you believe in without having done your due diligence. You just accepted it at face value. And when you talk about who do I know? that hasn't been um, named a conspiracy theorist and is accredited by the uh, the Journal of American Medicine. And of course, you didn't mention the Lancet, but of course, by them and the Nurses Association. I mentioned Dr. Robert Malone. Apparently, you don't know. I mentioned Dr. Richard Fleming. You don't know. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, I didn't mention, but I'm mentioning now. Um, Brian Artis. All of these are epidemiologists and or cardiologists, medical doctors, Peter McCullough. You don't know him. He's written mm -hmm. 500 articles, as I've mentioned, for, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for medical publications. Don't take mm -hmm. a look at the left side all the time. Take a look at the right you, side and see what happens. You, you, continue, you continue to bring politics into this, and I'm making, I'm not making this a political oh, issue, I sir. Politics. I you mentioned medical doctors. Left. You said the left. I'm not making it. I didn't say the left. Not, <laughs> All right. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so, exactly. You, did, you said the left. Okay, so and I what I'm saying left. is it's not, it's not a political issue, sir. It is a science issue. It is a public health issue. And that's not my, that my question. Why are you not listening? Not listening? Did you know Richard Fleming? Did you, have you heard of him? Yeah. As, as, no. You know what? Actually. Have you heard of him alone? 
I have heard of Malone, and you know what I know about Malone? He was a scientist that made unfounded COVID-19 mass information psychosis claims, which were found to be false by oh, again, it's doctors. Good. How do you know they're unfounded? Uh, by How do you know they're unfounded? If you let me answer, I will tell you. By almost every doctor's organization in the world, almost no, you name four or five individuals who are outliers. Hell, the attorney, the uh, the, the guy oh, who's around. responsible okay. for, excuse me, the guy who's responsible for medicine down in Florida, okay, also says, oh, yeah, masks are not good, don't wear them. Oh, yeah, the vaccine doesn't work. And the death, they're number three in the country, two or three in the country behind California. Yeah, Florida's so, dirty. Florida's not two or three in the country. California you're, you're, may be. Really, sir? And, sir uh, are you sure about yeah, that? Really? Would yeah. you like the specific numbers, sir? And yeah. Would you like the specific uh, numbers? Read them off to me. Read them. Oh, and do it quickly because I gotta, I gotta leave in a few minutes. Isn't that convenient? The reality <laughs> of it is, is that you know, I, I implore all of you listening to look up who has the highest death toll for COVID in the country, and you will find. Look it up, then. Look it up. Have you got five minutes? Are you in front of a computer? I am in front of a computer, in fact. Then, then he said, if you ask me if I wanted to hear the numbers, you're a numbers guy. Okay. Well, Google. Go hold ahead. on. Hold on a second. Hold on, numbers guys. All right. We we also have another caller on the line. Caller with the last numbers five two seven zero. Welcome to the Daily Go Getemism Show. Thank you for holding. What's on your mind this evening? Well, I'm going to just, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. I'm going to take it back to the question at hand, not to cut all the interesting information that I've been hearing, but I wanted to go back to the um, being scared to be around people or whatever that was that you said. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Um, you mean the topic of the show? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, what I wanted to say about it is that I'm, it's, I'm experiencing, have experienced it, mad that I'm experiencing it, but I'm definitely shook about being around people. And when I'm around people, then for the next couple of days, I'm like checking Am I coughing too much? Am I, you know, having mm-hmm. trouble breathing? Is my is my sneezing? Is it really a sneeze? You know, like is it my um allergies or do I have COVID again? Um because I know that I'm very, very uh susceptible to getting COVID or any virus at that at is that not just um COVID but anything, um, because I have a weakened immune system. So, and I know it's weak because I took the time and the extra effort to make my doctor get my antibodies checked after having COVID, getting shot one, two, and three. And, um, you know, in the treatments that I get lowers my immune system. So I just was, you know, just to see, I didn't really think it was going to be as low as it is, but I actually have no antibodies, which is the IgG antibodies, the ones that protect you from that you're supposed to be building up with the with the um with the vaccine. So I'm definitely limited in what I do um based based on what I want to do and what I actually do because of you know like not being around family, uh not being and then even when I, I think okay maybe I'll be around this person, I'm always around this person. They had COVID scares. Two people I know mm-hmm. had COVID over this last month. And one person had a scare of having COVID over this last month. And usually I'm with those people. But because I've been like secluding myself, I haven't been around them people because, you know, I don't want to experience COVID again. And I don't know to the extent that it would affect me, even though I've had the vaccine because I was in a hospital. And, mm-hmm. you know, like two seconds away from being on a ventilator, I had to fight fight those doctors not to put me on a ventilator. So mm. yeah, I'm I'm scared and, and it's a psychological thing and it messes with me because that's not me. Yeah. Um it has to affect you. You know, even if you get cabin fever or something like that, you're the type of person if you're the type of person that's a so- social butterfly or the type of person that does a lot of community service and you really want to be out there 
being being a benefit to the community at hand that you serve it's 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 hard it's hard to really be confident out there when when you see the the types of numbers that we're seeing now sure not as many people are dying as they were before so we can take that type of of fear out of it but who wants to be sick and like i said if yeah. if when i took the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine is a preview of what COVID is like. I don't want no part of that shit. That was crazy. I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine having um, breathing issues, a fever uh, and uh, um, a cough on top no of, on, on, on top of mm-hmm. what I was feeling. It, 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 it just felt like I had an anchor tied around my neck. It was, just, it was I, like, I felt like I couldn't do nothing. So, like, if, yeah. if COVID is anything like more than that, like that was enough. I didn't do my show. I got the vaccine on the second dose on a Thursday. I didn't do a show Friday and Saturday over that shit. That shit is crazy. So you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. nah, man, nah, 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 nah. We ain't. And that's without being sick. That's those are just those are just um um. You know side effects of of the vaccine, so they giving you they, they gave me uh the preview to that. I ain't trying to see that movie. No, 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 I'm good. So I I know that one of the real problems out here is that a lot of people still don't believe in the severity of of this of this virus. I was telling my brother, I was telling my baby brother, and he he is definitely one that doesn't see the see the seriousness of this virus. He knows that people get sick, but he really thinks it's just the flu. But when I told him what I was feeling after the vaccine, he, just like I was talking about word of mouth, word of mouth advertising is always going to be stronger than than anything that you see on TV or whatever. Now he he gets it mm-hmm. because he knows I'm not going to bullshit him about that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mm-hmm. hype it up and make it sound like it's something that is, that is really not. So I think him. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I, you know, like not trying to convince people it's real, not real, or you know, the vaccine is effective, not effective. When I had COVID, I, I had something called interstitial lung disease, which is a, a um, a lung disease deter- deterioration of the lungs. It's not very active, but it's there. So I have an X-ray of my lungs from interstitial lung disease. I have my x-rays from having COVID lungs. Totally different. It's there. It's different. It's like a shattered glass in my lungs, taking up all the space, which is why you can't breathe. And that's just my lungs. I don't have a picture of the other parts of my body that are affected because it affected my lungs for work. But can you, uh, you know what I mean? Can you imagine that's what people are spreading and it's I mean, you know, I don't know when when I cancer uh, cells used to fascinate me when I was in biology class, and I saw how it spread, how it took over and grew. That's the same thing. So when yeah. people don't wear masks and they're excreting, whatever you call it, excreting those germs coming out, and they're going all over the place, whether it's protecting them or me those germs are getting out. And right now, that's what they're trying to stop with the mm-hmm. man. And, and mm-hmm. that's just a, a portion. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like a band-aid on, a, um, on the, the, the Hoover Dam, but it's something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To stop, just to try and stop it from spreading so much right now. Mm-hmm. We can't get herd immunity if everybody do what they need to do so that we can, you know, so we can get to the point where it's just like getting the flu. You know, somebody gets the flu, everybody's not going to get the flu. Somebody get COVID, 10 people can get COVID from one person get COVID right, right. now right. Mm-hmm. until it's under control. Mm-hmm. 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 The bottom line is... And, and since you know, all, yeah. I'm so glad that you said that because, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I apologize to some of the listeners who had to hear me go back and forth with this gentleman, and it kind of goes back to what was said about people not wanting to believe in the virus and everything that you said is 100% accurate um you know ultimately the goal here isn't to argue about politics and be right or wrong the goal, my goal here is to just educate people so that that way they stay alive i don't want to mm-hmm. see anybody's mother or father 
or a child in the hospital. I, I don't want my wife uh, or her friends having to pull triples and, and be falling asleep at the hospital because they're trying to save lives when people could easily, easily do their best to try to keep this virus down so they can avoid it. And like that, that's why you hear a lot of the intensity. That's why you try to see, hear the numbers. It's because, you know, I understand what people's feelings are, but I also see what the facts are. And when somebody's family is laying in the hospital bed or somebody's child is laying in the hospital bed, you know, you don't want to hear about, oh, well, you know, uh, I've been walking around and I'm fine. Well, the truth of the matter is you, that gentleman might have been walking around fine, but he could have been asymptomatic and he could have killed somebody's grandma. And not knowing it, mm -hmm. and so that, and, and, and that's that, that's the problem. So when you know when I'm on the subway, and I I did post that on on the chat in, in the um, Instagram, you know, it does. It, I do take it personal because the way I feel is that when you get on the bus or you get on the subway and you look around, and in New York City and in and in Jersey City and in Newark or whatever, you see all over the place they got signs saying, "Please put the mask on." And I know some of y'all are putting it over your mouth, and that helps trying to, but it's not helping you. But it is helping everybody else because it's keeping some of that those droplets, you know, off of everybody else. But I really would appreciate for some of y'all to lift that over your nose so y'all don't get sick too. But the reality of it is, is that that one or two people that standing in that on that subway train and they acting indignant and they're just standing there looking proud. Listen, that person may not even know they're sick. It's like going back to the '80s where you know you go to the you don't want to strap up, and then all of a sudden you're wondering why you're coughing, you know, two, three Yo, years. Yeah, yeah. Like you see what I'm saying? Like you, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know. You don't know who's sick and who's not. And I, and the reality of it is, you know, um, it, it, it's a frightening thing. So, like I said, it's easy for people to sit back and say, "Well, I, it didn't happen to me." Well, it's happening to a lot of other people, and it might have happened mm -hmm. to you. You just don't know it yet. And what yeah. this lady said, what this sister just said before, I, uh, truth be told, a couple months ago, I was lifting weights, had an accident at the gym, right? Had to go to the hospital, had to get a chest x-ray, right? They hit me and they said, hey, do you have COVID? And I said, and at the time, I was going by what the science said. And this is before Omicron. So the previous variant couldn't evade the vaccine. And second. I, have a booster at the time. I just had the vaccine. So I said, no, I'm vaccinated. I can show you my, my uh, docket app and everything, and I'm good. She said, okay. I said, well, why do you ask? And she said, do you mind if we give you a COVID test? And I said, yeah, by all means, give me the test. So she gave me the test, and obviously I came out fine. But she said, the reason why we asked was because we noticed a few little tiny spots on your lung, and we usually see that with people who've had COVID. Well, the truth be told, about a year before or about a couple months before COVID became popular on the news, right? I went to Disney World and came back with my, with my then fiance. And um, I somehow came back to work. I was talking to one of my coworkers who just came back from a cruise. And we were talking. And about a couple days later, she goes home sick from didn't know what. So then I was like, oh, well, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. So she was out for a couple days. And all of a sudden, I don't feel well. And so I'm wondering, maybe that's what I have. So going back to what I was saying, you may not even know that you have it. And you out here giving it to other people. So just put on the mask. What's the harm? I mean, yeah. I mean people talking, people always say, oh, you know, these people want to bring politics into it. And say, oh, you know, these, these uh, liberals, they're, these Democrats, they're soft and everything. Well, you know, on the other side, y'all are afraid of a shot and a mask. I mean, I mean well, to be honest with you, I mean, really? Listen, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and then we got to get up out of here. I'll say do whatever you feel like you need to do to make yourself feel safe. But I don't think that this safety issue is should be a selfish issue. You know, like um, yeah. if, if with the same type of, of vigor and enthusiasm that you would use to try to protect your loved ones from not only disease, but from from people who would try to harm them in any way. Why wouldn't you do that to your fellow man? Especially when, it, when it, especially when it can circle back to you. So you know, as we, exactly. uh, yeah, as, as we go back to the the original topic, um, you know, being afraid to be around people, um, scared to death to be around people, whatever. You know, it's, it's a serious thing. We have a confidence issue yeah. going on out here because of this pandemic is going on too long, and the waves that is going yeah. through is really starting to take an emotional and psychological toll on people's health. And I know that yeah. I know that a lot of people are catching this shit because 
because they're already afraid. It's like the difference between war and rumors of war. The rumors of war will scare the shit out of you. The rumors of war will, yeah. ha- will have you losing a prize fight before before punch is ever thrown. You know, because you don't, you yeah. you don't, you have no confidence that you're going to be able to beat this guy. You know what I mean? And yeah. you you could have very well have won. You never know. But yeah. but listen, I appreciate y'all calling in. I really do. Nilo, once again, man, it's, it's so good to hear you on the radio again. You know, you need to come through. I'm I'm a, uh I'm gonna see about uh I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna hit you up and see about you get, about getting you on as as a guest. You know what I'm saying? It's time for you to yeah. You, I, I, I would love it, man. I, I would love yeah. it. I would love to do it. Um, you know, I, I just got to put the daddy daycare down a little bit. No doubt. And, uh, but yeah, we can definitely do that again because I, I missed it. I yeah. missed it. I missed yeah. it. You, you pick it. You dust it off the mic. It's time for you. It's time for you to get that thing wet with some spit. You know. So, uh, so I'm gonna holler at you, man. But, but, but once again, you know, you you always been bringing the information since I since I've known you and we in double digit years now. It's good to see you, man. And and congratulations to you, you too, and your brother. family. All right. And, and, and shout out to that sister, please. Make sure you look out for your health. You're doing the right thing. I, I love hearing, you know, people, especially, and I'm not trying to make it a, a color thing, but especially people of color, you know what I'm saying? They're looking out for their health. You know, that's something that we got to continue to do. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. And thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. No doubt. Thank he, you. And he be meaning that kind of stuff, too. <laughs> All right. So I holler at y'all. All right, y'all. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff by all. Good stuff by all. All right, yo, let's do these birthday shout outs. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious January 10th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Brenda Gauze turning 58 years old today, and also Pierre. The- Theolina Elizabeth, happy birthday to you, and Monique Savage Hall, and also Muna Ayn Williams, happy birthday to you. And last but not least, go get her. Go get her going all the way back to the 2015, went on one of our hikes before. Vashti Green, Vashti Green turning 37 years old today. I want to say happy birthday to all of you and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious. Audience, January 5th, excuse me, 10th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up, but don't turn up too loud, just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. I rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait, great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to, uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, man, whatever you have to do in order to feel good about being out there, if you have to go out there. And you know this, in some area of your life, you're going to have to leave your house, whether you have to go to work, whether you have to go get something to eat, whether you have to go to the laundromat, whether you have to go food shopping, whether you have to take the children to school or go to school yourself. You can't stay in a box and you can't stay well when you're constantly, constantly in fear that you're going to get sick. Fear of sickness causes sickness. Now, that's not to say that all you have to do to get really, really sick with any disease is believe that you are there. But it has been proven psychologically that that you can start to develop the symptoms of the thing that you fear the most. So if getting COVID is the thing that you fear the most, all you have to do is get a regular cold and you'll get the sniffles. You'll get you'll you may, you may get some congestion. You may get a headache. You may get a fever and things like that. And boom, next thing you know, you get tested and you, you find out, lo and behold, COVID. Now, the likelihood that that will happen if you, all you do is stay in the house by yourself is extremely low. We have to be around people. 
I don't know too much about this herd immunity thing and, and, and whether it really works or whatever. But that's not my concern. I tell you what is my concern. I'm going to tell you what is my concern. I want to see my people prosper and feel good and confident and have them be able to be productive out there and help each other out and, and, and start to eradicate the, the generations of fear that we have been in stemming all the way from slavery. Come on, man. Come on. We don't need to be. Look, 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 look. Real shit, we have already been, been kidnapped, assaulted, had our land stolen from us, put back in our land, and lost our identity. And you mean to tell me on top of that, now we got to be scared that we're going to get sick more than anybody else is going to get sick? Come on. We, let's do all that we can do to help our brothers and sisters feel good about themselves and feel good about our... Um, um, our status, our health status. And we can do that by helping each other to exercise, to build up our immune system, um, eating the right things, watching the things that we eat. Our, our, our diet is paramount. And, and keeping ourselves in an emotional state to whereas we feel good about what, we, what we're doing, who we are, where we go, and who we interact with. Peace to all my day ones, my everydays, and my brand news. I love y'all to death. Resuscitate y'all. love y'all right back to life. I will holler at y'all tomorrow. We be back tomorrow like 7 o'clock. You know, 7, 7.30. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I ain't going to lock it down for exactly 7 o'clock. You never know what could happen. But we going to say something like 7 o'clock. It's going to be y'all ride and everything is going to be all right. Thank you. Won't. Uh. So with that being said, Y'all have a great night. Don't forget to share this show. And don't forget to hit that like button. And don't forget, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel yet. We have fun over here in this place. So let me get my blog talkers out of here. Holler back. Yo, scared. No, not me. But I'm going to see if I can be Thank the you for using blog talk radio. Be so my Instagram is five slammer jammer. Thanks for coming on. Through. Let me exercise my grandma. What? And we are out, and I'm about that life. No, I'm not strife. I'm good. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do bizarre. I love y'all to death. I see you on the other side, my boobers. Peace.